Hiya, how's it going? Now, I've been involved in martial arts for almost 50 years now. <laughs> I'm older than I look. And during that time, I've been lucky enough to be involved with people from a wide range of backgrounds. So that includes everything from sort of hardcore combatives and military people, modern and traditional martial arts, sports people, professional people, dancers, people who just want to keep fit, ranging in age from sort of teenagers up to people in their 80s, I think. was our oldest student was a splendid chap in his 80s. So I've seen some people come and go, and I've seen some trends come and go as well. And one trend that, well, to my experience anyway, started in the late 80s, in the Chinese arts in particular, was this notion of no contact work, working without physical contact. So this was quite prevalent in certain types of Chinese art, the internal arts mostly. I know or I have seen it in some other arts as well from other places, but my initial experience was in the Chinese arts. So that's what I'm going to talk about first of all. The theory behind it, or the way it was explained to me by several people, is that the body has this natural energy, which the Chinese call qi, and through certain practices, certain methods of breathing and movement and so on, we can learn to accumulate this energy, to harness it, to increase it and to focus it. That energy can be focused to such an extent that it can be transmitted to another person. Okay, so, you know, I don't have too much argument with that. Explanations can differ, of course, but I've had quite a lot of experience with uh, health work where, yes, you can feel something in your own body. Yes, another person can feel that if you do this kind of thing. And, of course, the body has its own energy, right? Its own electromagnetic energy or bioenergy or whatever you want to call it. I don't really want to get into names and terms too much in this. But then this went a stage further and we got into this idea of no contact work or it was really more known as empty force in Chinese arts uh, because I'm going to distinguish empty force from no contact work in a little bit. So now the theory was, or the practice, that you could transmit this energy out of your hand and it would provide enough force to stop, physically stop another person or to affect them in some way and make them dance around or fall over or whatever the uh, transmitter wanted it to do. In effect, you could control a person from a distance through the use of this energy. Now, before we go any further, I just want to make this clear because as soon as you put up anything like this, uh, you can reference my Power of Chi video from a little while back. As soon as you put up anything like this, someone pops up and says, oh, but you have to do it, you have to experience it to understand it. You, you have to do this, you have to do that. Okay, so just let me make it clear again. I've seen a lot of people do this. I've gone through the training. Uh, I've seen various explanations given and everything else. So let's just get that out of the way. Oh, and then the other thing they'll say is, oh, but you need to go and see my teacher because my teacher is the only one who can do it properly. Great, I'm open-minded. I'll go and see anything with an open mind. Where is your teacher? Oh, he's doing a workshop in Brazil next week. You could pop over and, right, okay, it's not gonna happen quite clearly. You know, I'm not a man of means, but if your teacher or you are in the UK, I'm happy to travel within the UK as long as I can bring a video camera and I'm happy to test this empty force out in any way you would like. Because my experience, and I'll get onto that in a second, is such that I don't think empty force works on anyone but your own students. Now I could go into the who's and when's and how's and why's but I want to keep this vlog reasonably short, it's going to be long enough as it is. But two quick examples. So when my first teacher started getting into empty force work, because this was something you had to do if you were going to be a master, right? He had a group of students who he would gesture at and they would fall over or they'd come running into him and they'd be stopped like uh, they'd run into some sort of invisible wall or he'd have them try and punch him and they'd sort of freeze in place. And he asked me one evening to punch him and I wasn't trying to be clever, wasn't trying to be funny or anything else, but he asked me to punch him here. And you know, not a, a super hard punch. So I did, and I hit him. Again, not hard or anything, you know, but I hit him. 
and the look on his face, it was quite clear that I'd done something wrong because what I should have done, of course, is gone and fallen in with everything else that was going on. So in a way, that was the start of the end <laughs> in that particular school. Another example was there was an event held in Newcastle. This was in the 90s, every year. And uh, it got quite a good group of people from mostly Chinese arts backgrounds. We used to go up there at the time I was working with Dave Nicholson. So we used to go up there with some of our people and other sort of um, top teachers were there as well. And the guy who ran the event would spend the last half hour, 40 minutes doing empty full stuff on his students. All, all sorts of weird stuff. They'd be running at him, he'd be sending them flying, all sorts of things. Of course, we were naturally curious and we asked him, can you try that on us? And he kind of wouldn't really. And then he tried to do a little bit and nothing really happened. So I could give other examples, but point is I've had direct experience of this with a range of people and it's something I was involved in training, if you like, myself. But this is another thing that happens, you see. We had an instant one time where some people came down to the club. It wasn't particularly uh, fractious or anything, but nonetheless I had, I had to do something. I had uh, a little go with this guy who wanted to try some stuff out and I managed to take him down to the floor, probably more by luck than judgment. About a month later, I heard one of the other students who hadn't even been there that night say, oh yeah, yeah, I heard that guy came in and Rob just lifted his hand up and the guy fell down. <laughs> I wish. So that's how these things can start, right? I mean, I heard one recently from someone saying about his teacher or he knew of a teacher who was able to freeze a crocodile in place, right? With a simple word and the crocodile was frozen and he managed to escape. Well, that's easily put to the test. You know, that's all I'm saying on that. So there's obviously something going on, right? Because people are reacting. In that sense, empty force is real because these people are having a reaction. But the question is, why are they reacting? And my point of view is that they are reacting because they've been gradually conditioned to do so, to react in a certain way. So what I'll do now is I'll get a couple of the lads in and I'll show you how I think that happens. Obviously, we're going to accelerate that process because, you know, it can take weeks or months or years to condition people in a certain way. But I'll talk about that first. Once we've done that, I'm going to go on to talk about and show other types of no contact work. And I'm going to give you the secret of how that works. So, again, I'm going to try and uh, compress this process into like 90 seconds. But this will take place over a period of weeks, months, even years. And it shows you how students can be conditioned into reacting a certain way. First of all, of course, I have to establish that I'm the master, I'm the guy in charge and all that kind of stuff. So we've got that um, dynamic going on. But it can start with something as simple as this. If, if Andy just crosses his hands, he can just bring one foot forward. So if I do, uh, I'll just take it that way. If I just do like a typical sort of Tai Chi push, I can push Andy away and off he goes. But you're not doing it right. Okay, so what you need to do when I push you, you need to dispel the energy by doing, if you push me and I'll show you. Because that dispels the energy, right? So when I push him now. <laughs> little dance me. <laughs> what you want me to do? Oh, yes, right, yes, because right, right, right. you got to do it right. you got to do it. That's it. <laughs> so, because that's the right way to do it, the teacher said so, then I say you start doing it. Okay, now there might be something in that, in that you can keep your posture and everything else, but to me a better thing is if he pushes me, I'll just relax. <laughs> anyway, that's how you start conditioning the students to act a certain way. That will then soon come into, if you come towards me in some way and I make a pushing movement, you're conditioned to that same response. If I come to you and you do the push movement. <laughs> Please, <laughs> Take that one home, mate. Because I start, getting, I start getting conditioned to when I feel like I'm going to be pushed, that's going to be my response. Okay. That then goes into, you're the teacher now. Um, push but then make some sort of direction 
movement. Whoa. Then eventually we'll arrive at that place where you just lift your hand up. Yeah. So people might say, yeah, but when you can mm. see the teacher, you know, obviously there could be this sort of stuff going on. What about if you can't see the teacher? What if the teacher is standing behind? I've seen that done. And this is how that works. You ask the person to stand up straight. He stands to attention. You see? Uh, everything is lifted up. Now, even if I leave him on his own, and he's got a good balance, and he's relaxed inside, so, you know, he, he might have to exaggerate a little bit. But what happens if you get most people to stand like this for a little while, they start to maybe move a little bit, right? If the teacher is in front of them, then it's, yes, it's even easier to get them to move because you can start doing that. If the teacher's behind, they tap into that movement. So I'll, I'll just do it from here. So as he's swaying, Oh, uh, so it looks like I'm pulling him. <laughs> but all I'm doing is tapping in to his movement. So this is a little bit like sort of magic trips or mentalism or, you know, whatever you want to call it, NLP and all this kind of stuff. Cold reading in a way, but physical cold reading, because I see where the person's movement is going. If he moves to the side, they're, oh, look, now he's going sideways, <laughs> you know. I'll adapt what I'm doing to his movement. I'm not causing his movement. So let's get on to now no contact work as opposed to empty force. So empty force is this force coming out to affect the person. No contact work is working without touch. And this is something we do every day. This is very normal and natural. If Jay walks towards me, no contact work. I made him stop without touching it, right? So on your basic level, it's really getting that flinch. Now, whether that's to make him flinch or to stop or to redirect or whatever, it's quite um, basic work to do. This is obviously relying on a visual component. So if I ask Jay to close his eyes, just keep your eyes closed, walk towards me, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, stop. Go right back, open your eyes, walk towards me again. <laughs> no contact work. Okay. Because you're aware. All right. So that's very much relying on a visual component. He has to see the movement. That's why if we're doing this work from uh, a sort of defence perspective or protection or whatever, as he comes in, I have to make my movement very clear in order for him to see it. If, if I do like sort of... His eyes moved, but the rest of him didn't, right? Um, but we can of course work in other ways we don't necessarily need to rely on the visual so if I ask Jay to close his eyes again and just, actually just take a couple of steps forward there we go right I've got him to move without touching him simply by asking him so in any self-defense situation there's a visual component there's a verbal component and there's that um, you know, there's a lot of information going backwards and forwards that is non-verbal. How we stand, how we position ourselves and everything else. So that's the basis for the no contact work in Sistema and the things that I've been shown. That is quite a, a, a sort of basic level. It, it can take some practice to get that, but then you can work deeper into that as well. So there's a concept of like, um, if you just come and just put your weight on my arm, can't you put both hands out and right? So that's called giving someone support. Okay, if you go back again. Support. Go back again. So no contact work. Again, you could call that a faint or something. And this can all be done with varying degrees of subtlety, right? But this is all psychological. And here's the secret of no contact work, drum roll. There has to be contact. There has to be contact. There's contact, right? Not necessarily physical contact, but there has to be contact. I can't put Jay in the corner over there and stand here and go and make him move because there's no contact. If we put headphones on him, play some nice music, perhaps a blindfold, you know, nothing I do then will affect him because there's no contact. Now that's not to say sometimes you will feel contact in another way and this is something everyone gets at some time. Like if you're here, someone comes and stands here, you feel it. Okay. 
So that's part of our bodily awareness, our intuition or whatever you want to call it. Again, there's nothing mystical or magical about that. Uh, and it could be that here you might pick up on the sounds or you know, you feel a presence sometimes. So that basically is how, to my understanding, certainly at one level, no contact work works because there is contact. I don't believe that someone can emit enough force or energy from their hand. The body has energy, but it's be you can't, um, you know, you can't light a light bulb with it. You can't affect a magnetic needle on a compass with it. It's a very low level. I don't think you can build up sufficient energy in that sense to go, and the person does it. Wow. Unless he's been programmed <laughs> <laughs> and whatever to do so. <laughs> So this is where you have to be very careful as an instructor because if your student, like if Jay comes in to attack me or do something, oh, now on one hand that might be something I can use, but if that becomes a conditioned response in you and a conditioned response in me, it's no good. Mm -hmm. Better if he comes in, whatever I do, you just go around it and you keep, well, all right, all right, that's better. For me as a teacher, I think, oh, that didn't work, I got hit, but good, because if it doesn't work, why do you want to do it, you know? That's not to say that I can't stop building this stuff in to my work in some way. Wow, that she was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a little push and you're moving. Because, you know, the angle he was, the angle I pushed and all the rest of it. You know, it's that's just basic uh, anatomy and how humans work, physically and psychologically. So there we go, that's my take on empty force and no contact work. To my mind, if you think that there's no importance in no contact work in a sort of a self-defense type situation then that's just as daft as thinking that people can beam energy out of their hands uh, to push other people away. Obviously there's a lot of communication that goes on that is non-verbal and is visual and as I've said there that's something we can hook into, learn and develop. And as I said at the start please bear in mind before you comment below, oh but you, you never never, I did. I did, all right? So, you know, let's just clear that out of the way first. I'm happy to answer any other questions or address any other points that people raise. And as I said, if you're in the UK and you think you can do this, I'm happy to come along. As long as we can film it, that's fine. And as we've had in the past, I'm happy for people to come into our training space with the lads and try things out. You know, friendly environment and everything else. But it will be interesting to see. So I'm not totally close off to anything, but it has to be proven to be what you say it is. As always, please like, share and subscribe. And do click the join button below to get access to all the detailed instructional downloads on our member channel. Take care.